Hey guys, this is Emma, and today is Wednesday on Secret Circus, and I'm coming at you with an independent video. This is all going to be in one take because I feel like I tend to do better videos when that happens, um, even though it's usually because I'm kind of crunched for time. So, I have started my classes and stuff. I've actually been in classes for like three weeks. But we have started learning about pain in my psychology class and about like emotional responses and pain and stuff too. So there are people who are born with like either damaged pain receptors, which are called mostly receptors, damaged pain receptors, or they're born without pain receptors, or some part of the pathway to the brain as far as pain goes is damaged. So they don't feel physical pain. Now this is a huge problem because like, you know, when you get like a stomach ache after you eat something bad or like, you know, you rest your hand on a, pan, a hot pan accidentally or whatever, you know to move or you know to go get medical attention. But people who can't feel pain don't know that. So they can, they can have like ruptured appendixes and they won't even know that anything's wrong. So that can be incredibly dangerous. But the thing that I find most interesting about people who are born with without the ability to feel with the, uh, without the ability to feel pain is that they experience much less negative emotions because the path that pain receptors and pain signals takes up to the brain is very like specific it's just for, it's like reserved just for pain and it goes up through the amygdala which is in charge of emotion and so Partially, when you feel a negative emotion like sadness or whatever, it's partially actual physical pain that you're feeling. So, like, when people talk about emotions being painful, they mean it literally. Like, it is actually painful. It's not just in your head. It's physically, actually painful. And so, with people whose pain reception is disrupted, they don't feel the negative emotions as much as like other people do. They they just don't feel it to like they feel it to some extent, but not to like the greatest extent. At least this is according to my psych class. And but what is most interesting about this is that they still feel positive emotions. So they feel happiness and love and humor and like all of these other positive emotions they just don't feel the negative emotions so like you know all of those things where people are like oh you can't have happiness without sadness you can't enjoy one without the other you can't have love without having like heartbreak or whatever that sort of thing it's all lies from a strictly scientific standpoint lies not true i mean sure the frame of reference might be nice for oh this is what sadness is this is what happiness is wow um and also like you are likely to feel happiness and sadness if you are not one of those people who are born uh without the ability to feel pain um so like yes statistically it is likely that you'll experience love and heartbreak happiness and sadness but like physically speaking doesn't have to be that way but you know like rather deal with a little bit of emotional pain than have to deal with uh not being able to feel pain at all actually like that would be really ridiculous and unfortunate so yeah fun fact all of those sappy posts and sappy sayings about love and pain going hand in hand they're lies everything is lies um so I will see Alyssa on Monday, ooh, fabulous, and I will see Ben on Friday because he's a jerk and decided not to switch his days around. Actually, no, I don't really care. Um, Wednesdays worked better for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I will see you guys later. Bye!